today we are going to discuss about some of the multiple choice questions that have appeared in the previous examinations. So now coming to NEET PG 2022 questions. A patient presented in the emergency department with symptoms of respiratory depression. So you know he is breathing with lot of effort or maybe the you don't see a respiratory effort okay and there is suspicion of overdose of opioids you know maybe he is injected heroin okay or consumed a lot of uh, codeine okay or maybe he has used other synthetic opioids like fentanyl which is very risky you know even a small quantity can cause respiratory depression you must have heard about heroin getting contaminated with synthetic opioids like fentanyl right so this person has come with respiratory depression he is really struggling to breathe you know right or maybe you don't see his body moving no respiratory effort so what is the next step in management of course you have to use a opioid antagonist right because you need a drug to go and sit on all possible opioid receptors and reverse the effects of the opioid that he has taken right so you need a non selective opioid antagonist which is you know you just it just has to go and sit on the opioid receptors so such a non selective huh, competitive opioid competitive opioid antagonist would be which one the answer is naloxone and naloxone would work either through iv im iv im or as a nasal spray you cannot give it as a tablet okay and it works very quickly within few minutes if you give IV or IM. Okay, so it comes as a preloaded syringe, naloxone. So naloxone is the right answer. Buprenorphine is a partial agonist. Methadone is opioid agonist. These are used in opioid substitution therapy, OST. Correct. For relapse prevention, you can use these drugs for OST. Naltrexone is a opioid antagonist. Okay, but it cannot work so rapidly like naloxone and naltrexone is usually a oral formulation right in a person who is, is in respiratory depression you cannot think of giving a oral tablet right so naloxone preloaded syringe is used in this patient so the answer is a a patient consumed a large number of tca what is tca tricyclic antidepressants so can you think of one tricyclic antidepressant Amitriptyline, right? Amitriptyline, which is frequently used. Other ones like imipramine, right? Dosulipin, nortriptyline. All these are tricyclic antidepressants. These are older an antidepressants. So he has consumed a large amount of TCA pills and has presented with altered sensorium, hypotension, and ECG is showing wide QRS complexes. So you know the ECG is showing widened widened qrs complexes okay so what is the next best step in the treatment so the answer here is sodium bicarbonate nahco3 you have to use sodium bicarbonate to reverse the cardiac toxicity you know what is the risk of a tca overdose it is cardiac toxicity because tca affects the sodium channels in your myocardial cells okay and it can cause bradycardia signs of heart block okay bundle block like features bradycardia huh? and it can be reversed with sodium bicarbonate so the answer here is c after five days of normal vaginal delivery a woman is brought to casualty by her husband he reported that she has been crying all night there is history of loss of appetite, difficulty in sleeping and feeling low. General physical examination is unremarkable. There are no significant findings on the pelvic examination. No other complications. Which is the best term to describe her condition. So, this woman has come in the first week after delivery. Okay. And has developed certain depressive symptoms. She is crying all night. Lost appetite. Insomnia is there. Feeling low. Sad mood is there. So, if there are three or four depressive symptoms in a woman who comes in the first one or two weeks of pregnancy right and if this woman is not having say suicidal ideations okay this 
particular patient does not have suicidal ideation she is also not having any uh, you know psychotic symptoms okay there are no psychotic symptoms in this patient correct so and especially if the person comes within one or two weeks of their delivery and there are no suicidal ideations no psychotic symptoms then the diagnosis would be postpartum blues postpartum blues can happen in up to 40% of women after delivery so it's a very uh, you know frequent uh, thing uh, uh, set of symptoms that we see in women who have delivered okay and why that happens why postpartum blues happens is because of the hormonal changes there is a dip in estrogen so the dip in estrogen means there is increased levels of monoamine oxidase monoamine oxidase is the enzyme which uh, is a digestive enzyme for your catecholamines like serotonin norepinephrine dopamine right so research has shown that monoamine oxidase level increases after uh, pregnancy you know the neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine reduce which leads to these postpartum blues right so the answer here is postpartum blues if the patient had suicidal ideation psychotic symptoms then you could have thought of postpartum depression or postpartum psychosis right so which is not okay here next question a 16 year old adolescent female was referred for irresistible urge to eat followed by episodes of self induced vomiting so the person has an irresistible craving to eat and then the person is feeling very guilty and probably is fearful that they are going to gain a lot of weight if they eat like this and they are inducing vomiting they are purging out okay so the patient is also on appetite suppressants so she is trying really hard to you know ensure that she does not develop a craving for eating food right so what is the most likely diagnosis is it binge eating disorder in binge eating disorder the person would eat heavily in binges in in short bursts okay and maybe develops lot of guilt after that that's binge eating disorder what is pica pica is eating inedible stuff inedible stuff like paint chalk piece you know that is pica what is anorexia nervosa an individual starves themselves they are restricting calories and food okay despite becoming cachectic they think that they are getting fat and they restrict food at all costs so the answer here is bulimia nervosa where there is an irresistible craving to eat food the individual would have a normal weight okay that is another thing unlike anorexia nervosa where the individual would lose lot of weight and become cachectic okay right so in anorexia nervosa they would develop cachexia right whereas in bulimia nervosa they would maintain normal weight now coming to neat pg 2023 questions a 25 year old female patient is brought with symptoms of anxiety palpitation sweating breathlessness chest pain feeling she might have a heart attack feeling of impending doom she may die you know patient had 5 to 6 episodes in a month 30 minutes each since 6 months what is the likely diagnosis so very clearly this person is having intense bursts of anxiety with lot of physical symptoms and a sense of impending doom so the diagnosis here is panic disorder right it is definitely not generalized anxiety disorder it is not agoraphobia gad is where there is free floating anxiety worries you know and they don't have episodic anxiety like in panic disorder agoraphobia is a fear of closed spaces or open spaces depression you know very well is about you know uh, low mood lack of energy lack of interest right so the diagnosis here is panic disorder a chronic alcoholic with symptoms of confusion ataxia obducent nerve palsy lateral rectus palsy correct lateral rectus palsy and nystagmus is brought to the emergency what is the likely diagnosis so this person is a chronic alcoholic so is probably you know abusing alcohol or he is dependent on alcohol right and has developed altered sensorium confusion ataxia unsteady gait and also lateral rectus palsy okay so it has developed ophthalmoplegia correct ophthalmoplegia okay so there is confusion global confusion okay global confusion ophthalmoplegia due to 
here lateral rectus palsy or other extra ocular muscle palsy and then there is ataxia or unsteady gait and nystagmus in addition. So the mnemonic to remember here is GOA, G-O-A, okay. You go to GOA and uh, drink a lot of alcohol, right, you may end up developing Wernicke's encephalopathy, right. So the answer here is Wernicke's encephalopathy which has the set of symptoms, global confusion, that is the person is disoriented, unable to recognize where he is, has difficulty remembering things, right? And ophthalmoplegia or, you know, he has some abnormalities in the gaze or may have nystagmus as part of ophthalmoplegia and may have unsteady gait ataxia. So, remember the mnemonic GOA. So, uh, some people may ask, is it Korsakoff syndrome? Korsakoff syndrome is a consequence of Wernicke's encephalopathy. Here what happens is, it is a long term complication. If an individual develops Wernicke's encephalopathy, they may develop amnestic syndrome, you know, a chronic amnestic syndrome where they have difficulty remembering and specifically they have problem in new learning ability. So, all of you have seen the movie Ghazni, right? So, whatever happens just this day or just in these few hours, he has no recollection. But he remembers very well what has happened, uh, say, a few years before or a few months before. So, these individuals will not be able to make new memories. So, it's something like a Ghazni syndrome, you can remember, okay? So, new learning ability is impacted in Korsakoff syndrome. Such an amnestic syndrome is a consequence of Wernicke's encephalopathy. If you don't treat Wernicke's encephalopathy, they may develop Korsakoff syndrome. You know what is delirium tremens? We already discussed in the previous slides. Declerambault syndrome is, you know, not related to uh, these set of uh, symptoms, okay? Right? So, uh, Declerambault syndrome is associated with delusions that uh, a particular, your partner is cheating on you, right? So, the answer here is Wernicke's encephalopathy. A male patient comes with history of marital conflicts and complaints of early ejaculation, okay? So, something called as premature ejaculation, okay? So, not able to perform during sex for a satisfactory duration of time, right? Which of the following non-pharmacological, they don't want a drug here, the patient is asking, I am not going to take any medication for this, I want a non-pharmacological method to treat my condition. So, is it cognitive behavior therapy for uh, premature ejaculation? You know, may not be the most suitable idea here, okay? Because you want the person to have immediate, uh, uh, you know, response. Exposure and response prevention is a gold standard treatment for OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, right? Where you expose to the anxiety provoking stimulus. So, if the uh, individual is worried about dirt and contamination, you make the person touch a uh, contaminated object and then he should not indulge in compulsion of hand washing, right? He has to tolerate that distress and anxiety that arises. That is exposure and response prevention. You do it in a hierarchical fashion by choosing something which causes the least amount of di distress and you go on building the amount of distress slowly. That is ERP. So, the answer is not ERP here. Is it sensate focused uh, technique? Sensate focused technique is a very important form of sex therapy, okay? Here, there are a certain set of steps which are used to uh, teach individuals how to have a satisfactory sex life. If especially they, uh, you know, they are not attracted to their partner anymore or they are not able to perform sex anymore, right? And usually if these problems are psychogenic in nature, so they have gone to the urologist, they have got all the tests done, there is no problem in the nervous system, there is no diabetes, no hypertension, still they are not able to perform, right, in the bed. Then probably sensate focus therapy is a form of sex therapy which can be useful. In our patient who has early ejaculation, one easy technique which can be used is squeeze technique, you know, where you press just behind the glands penis as soon as you have a feeling that you may ejaculate or you may climax, right? Just holding behind, uh, you know, glands penis, either yourself or your partner holds it so that it just delays the, it reduces that feeling of climax and you don't ejaculate immediately. So, that is squeeze technique. So, 
just teaching this squeeze technique would be quite useful for this particular patient. A patient with a diagnosis of schizophrenia not responding to haloperidol and thyroidazine. Okay? So basically, uh, they have tried these typical antipsychotics, older generation antipsychotics, he has not responded to that. So he started on some drug, okay, drug A, which has side effects of siluria. There is a lot of salivation that this patient has developed as an adverse effect. This person also has developed dyslipidemia. So there is abnormalities in the lipid profile, also abnormalities in the blood sugars, okay, hyperglycemia. So what is the drug which is started here, right? Is it risperidone? Risperidone can definitely cause dyslipidemia and hyperglycemia. Patients can complain of some excessive salivation, okay, but it's not very characteristic. Eripiprazole and ziprazidone have lesser chances of causing these adverse effects, especially the metabolic adverse effects that you see with other atypical antipsychotics. So the answer here is clozapine. You know clozapine is the gold standard treatment in treatment resistant schizophrenia, TRS treatment resistant schizophrenia and the problem you know with clozapine which is a very good drug in treatment of uh, uh, treatment resistant schizophrenia is that it causes lot of metabolic issues such as dyslipidemia, hyperglycemia and also patients complain of uh, increased salivation okay and you also need to monitor their blood okay you need to do a complete blood count every week okay for the first three to six months, you need to do CBC, right? Complete blood count just to ensure that the person doesn't develop agranulocytosis or neutropenia, right? Agranulocytosis is a severe problem that one can see in the usage of clozapine. It's an adverse effect which you need to monitor, correct? In addition, all these other problems can also be seen. So the answer is clozapine here. Thank you.